if you drag, say, say we wanted to um, create a relationship between the location, location table and the sales table, all you need to do is grab the location ID like so and connect that to the location ID in the sales table. Now the important thing here is that this arrow needs to point from the lookup table to the fact table. What you want is you want a one at the start of the table and a star at the end of the table and that signifies a one to many relationship. Now as you're starting out in Power BI, 90% of your relationships are going to be this one to many. Sometimes what happens is that you can get a double arrow here. And if we cl double click on this line, you'll see that this edit relationship pop up box comes up and I can change this cross filter direction to be either single or both. So sometimes when you create a relationship, you'll get this double lined arrow. And what I, what I recommend here is to disregard that. In a lot of, in most cases, you do not need this bi-directional relationship. It just confuses, confuses things in your data model. But what it actually does is, the, and, and why you want to structure it like this, is because the filters usually flow from the lookup tables and down into the fact tables. But what a double arrow means is that filters can flow from the sales table up to the location table as well. And in most cases, that's never a reality. It's never actually how you want to think about how filters work in Power BI. You always want to think about, well, my dimensions are all up here, like say my, my county, the name of the um, state, salesperson, date, date dimensions, etc. You always want to think, well, these actually are filters which are going to go filter information that we source from our data table. Very rarely are you going to, are you going to filter um, are you going to filter your location ID up to your location table because there's no there's no calculations or there's no measures that we can do over those those tables. So in most cases it's always going to be single and I highly recommend always making it single unless you're in one of these five to ten percent um, scenarios where a relationship needs to be bi-directional. But you you won't come across those sort of scenarios until you get to to, to far more advanced work in Power BI. So let's now connect, connect up the rest of it, these tables. So obviously the date table is going to connect to the purchase date table. And then the salesperson ID is going to connect to the ID down here. And the customer ID to the customer ID. And the product ID to the product ID. So now we're modeling, now we're really modeling our our, our data. So we've got all our lookup tables at the top. We've got all our one direction, our one direction relationships, which flow flow downhill to our fact table. So now that we've done this, we can use any dimension or any column in here to filter information that we source from this table. We can use, uh, say, the first last first name, last name, sales salesperson's full name. Uh, we've got location, customer name. And then location, we've got a number of different things. We've got um, we've got state, state code, county, uh, then the actual name of the uh, the city, and so on and so forth. Those could never filter this table until we built those relationships. But now that we've built these relationships, we've built that we've got this really efficient model of data, uh, where we've got a number of different dimensions here that we can then filter by um, filter this table by. Now maybe you're asking why even have these lookup tables? Why not have just one massive table here? Well, there's a reason why you don't. Now, if we jump into this data section here on the left-hand side, you'll see that we can actually see the data that is um, sitting within this table. Now, if we look at our sales table, you'll see that this table is actually about almost 11,000 rows. Now, what if we wanted to look at, the, if, if this was just one table, what if we wanted to look at this information over a year, or over the month of year, or over um, the city, or the city name, and so on and so forth? Well, we would have to create columns of information that were 11,000 rows long, and that, and that uh, information would be repeated uh, many, many times. But what happens if we have it in our date like so, we only actually have to reference the date once 
once. We don't have to reference it multiple times. And we can create dimensions from that one date to then filter the 10,000 or 11,000 row table, which is sales. So this date table is actually only 800 rows. Uh, you know, our location table is only 74 rows. So we only actually have to have our, our, our city name uh, once and all these different dimensions which are associated with that versus jumping to the sales table and having to then list them out, out here on the right hand side 11,000 times. And we can create this efficiency by these relationships. So everything within this table is still connected to this table. It's just we've got them in a more efficient uh, data table by themselves rather than having to make this massive table that's 30 col columns long with every single dimension that we can filter by. It's just a far more efficient way to store data and to actually then model uh, data and, and run calculations and measures over, over that data. You can also manage relationships in another, uh, or get to that manage relationships pop-up box another way. So you can actually manually create a, so if I just um, say get rid of this, get rid of this relationships here, I can then click into the um, home, on the home ribbon we've got manage relationships. We can click on that like so, and we can create a new relationship between our product table, so product ID, and we wanna grab our product ID like so, and then jump to our sales table, and then find product ID like so, and then it's a one to many, which is right, and then we've got a single, uh, there's gonna be a single direction, which is right as well, and then we just go okay, and then that relationship is created that way. So there's, there's a few ways that you can actually create relationships. There's actually, uh, there's actually three ways, uh, but it's also how you can audit your relationships as well. So say for instance, you wanted to get a quick snapshot of what all the relationships were in your data model, um, by clicking on manage relationships you can see that quite easily you can also edit your relationships too and then it just brings you back to this pop-up box where you can then uh, make all those changes one thing to note here is that you've got here many to one and this can sometimes confuse some people now the only reason why it is that it is actually one to many it's just because this sales table is the first uh, uh, table group here and then you've got the product table so it's just saying many to one but it's the same as one to many it's the same it's the same thing the key to the key thing to know is you want your ones up against your um, your lookup tables because and your lookup tables are only going to have one unique value for every occurrence but then you've got your mini your your mini symbol which is the star which is always going to be on the side of your fact tables because that's where you're going to have many iterations of the same um, ID in this case.